This is a special edition of KTSM 9 News Small Town Spotlight. KTSM 9 News at 6 out of the studio and in the community as we continue with our Small Town Spotlight series. We are coming to you today live from Socorro, Texas, a diamond in the desert with rich tradition, history, agricultural, beautiful arts, and as we've learned over the past couple days, a lot of different entertainment options. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to this special edition of KTSM 9 News at 6. I'm Andy Morgan. And I'm Monica Cortez. And you know what? This town has truly embraced us, Andy. Mm -hmm. I feel so special just being here. We got to try the delicious fruit from Charlatan, yep. which is just across the street from Casa Ortiz, where we're at. And then we got to try some really nice pies that we'll try a little later yep. as well. Um, and then what else? There's so much going on here. Everyone has been so nice. I feel like now I'm from Socorro. Yeah, this is definitely <laughs> a, a, a Saturday that everyone at home, El Pasoans who haven't uh, explored Socorro before, yes. I'm telling you, an absolute blast. We touched on a lot of the history in our five o'clock hour. We are actually live at uh, Casa Ortiz, which this building dates back to the 1800s. It's wow. actually also the office of Congressman Tony Gonzalez, which I think is so, so cool. It is cool. And when you have a building this old, I just think about it too with all the art on the walls. And I'm just like, man, if these walls, if they could talk, they would certainly have a story to yeah, tell. Yeah, so many stories that you can definitely see. And even this infrastructure just is so beautiful, Andy. And I can't wait to tell you guys. Oh, by the way, if you guys are planning on coming out to Socorro, I will plan out your date night. It's fun. Yes. I will tell you about it. And we'll tell you about it right after the weather because it kind of feels a little muggy and hot, right? Yes, and I think our temperatures are on <laughs> the rise as we welcome in meteorologist Robert Bettis, who is here live with us in the Socorro. Robert, I know you like it hot. Is it hot enough for you? <laughs> mm. Oh, oh no. Andy, Monica, don't be shy. Get your Bodega Loya apricot pie out and have yourself a nice refreshing bite. It might be close to 100 degrees outside, but once you take a mouth-watering bite of that homegrown apricot pie, the temperature just seems to melt away. <laughs> Joining me now, Ralph and Marty Loya. They own Bodega Loya and they made this delicious pie. They grow it as well. How long have you lived in Socorro? All my life. All our lives. All your life. High school sweethearts. Yes, high school sweethearts. And they farm and they make literally the best pie I've had. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. I love Socorro. <laughs> now, will I love Socorro a week from Thursday when it's 108 degrees? That's right. Hot for Father's Day weekend, but then the high pressure kicks into a higher gear and we're really going to roast. I'm going to have your full forecast. I don't expect to have much of this pie left. I'll see you in just a little bit. Andy, Monica. Well, mm -hmm. get this. We have some pie, too. Oh, and you know what? Let me tell you. Okay, so you have chavacanos or apricots. You have peaches. And apparently, Marty Loya, mm -hmm. she makes these. They're homegrown. Obviously, they grow their own produce. It is just fantastic. You guys have to take one home. It is made with love. Oh, absolutely. That is for sure. And this is actually the secret one of my, ingredient, right? Mm -hmm. This is actually one of my favorite stories, Bodega Loya, um, and the farming that they do out here because everything is so intertwined here in Socorro. Yes. Tourism obviously uh, relies a lot on the agriculture mm -hmm. here in Bodega Loya and some of uh, the ingredients they have, the same way that they rely on obviously people coming out and, and embracing that. So uh, a lot is intertwined here. And as we've seen kind of with uh, some of our Small Town Spotlight series, a lot of these smaller communities, they absolutely not only embrace, but they need that agriculture. Absolutely. And you know what? I love both Marty and Ralph. I can't wait for you guys to meet them. Check out their story. So this farm goes back to the 1890s. It was established by my father's uh, godfather. They were looking for a son to raise as a farmer. And so basically they went down the street and asked my grandma if they could have their son, and she says, sure. She already had enough kids, I guess. If you look at the house, the farmhouse, and all the buildings around, it's all adobe. So we've continued the tradition. These are our grassroots. Uh, we continue the tradition of farming. Now my uh, husband and I run the farm. Uh, Ralph is the one that's out there every day working the plants, working, making sure that everything is irrigated. These are basically, the we like to call these our spice beds. We have strawberries coming in here. Here, eat that. 
I, you'll love it. Yeah, we got these beautiful, this is borage. Restaurants buy our flowers. They, they use them for garnishing. We've got our heirloom, our heirloom corn back here in the back. This, this seed has been passed down to the family probably three, 400 years now through the Peru uh, Native Americans here, here that, that, that we're part of. Wow, that, that, that rain really, that rain, that rain, God bless God and Mother Nature helped us with the rain, but uh, the hail and, and the heavy rain uh, did damage a whole bunch of our corn. This is an apple. This is a granny apple. Pero mira, tenemos una infestation de pericos. This is what the parrots do. If they don't knock them down, they bite them. But we have an infestation of parrots. The west side used to have all these parrots, and they were, oh, they were all bougie. We got parrots on the west side. I wish they would have kept their parrots. <laughs> There's nothing better than, than, than fruit ripening on the vine or on the tree. The best peach, this, this side of the Pecos. We have clientele from all over El Paso, but I love to hear people say, this is a real farmer's market. Well, we're not a farmer's market, we're a farmer's stand. <laughs> we have our, we, we farm everything in the back and we sell it in the stand up front. They had no idea that we had this in El Paso where you can actually, if it's not, like I tell everybody, if it's not fresh enough for you on the, on the fruit, fruit cart, we'll go back there and cut it fresh and you can help me cut it or, or pull it, you know? Gosh, I am so jealous of Ozzy. I bet you anything he got to eat that produce fresh. I mean, we're eating this delicious oh, yeah. apricot peach. It is delicious. And you know what? Speaking of growth here, I feel like there's been a lot of small businesses coming into Socorro. And obviously leaning on that tourism part of it and the agriculture here. I know that our very own Tawny Davis is standing by with a very special guest. What do you got for us, Tawny? That's right, Andy, Monica, I'm here with Rudy Cruz Jr., who is one of the city representatives of Socorro. And Mr. Cruz, tell me, how much have you seen Socorro grown over the years that you've been here? So being fourth generation uh, Socorro resident, I've seen cotton fields turn into businesses and uh, structures and homes and whatnot. But here on the Mission Trail, we've seen uh, just a revamp of what used to be homes built in the 1800s uh, turned into uh, businesses and local farms and stuff like that. And we talk about all, all the small businesses, a lot of them here today. How do you all rely on each other? Because you all are just steps away from each other. So it's funny you ask that. I'm, I'm, I'm very proud to say that the, the brewery uses local ingredients. And at the same time, the Chalatan, that's also been voted the, the best taco here in Texas monthly. Um, you'll see him later on on the Food Network. Um, they actually go to Bodega Loya, which is a farm down the road. It's just a local farm, and they pick out those ingredients. They're fresh, and they use it uh, to prepare all the meals there at the Charlatan. And that's how they rely on each other, and they back each other up. That's what's really, really uh, respectable. And talking about growth, what are some future plans you would say for Socorro? So just recently, uh, with the support from uh, Congressman Gonzalez and Commissioner Ileana Elguin, we've been working on... Uh, developing the Mission Trail Alliance and what that's going to help bring uh, here to the Mission Trail. It's a nine mile stretch. It's going to help bring uh, geo tracking uh, for those businesses. It'll send a notification to your mobile device and let you know where you're at. It'll tell the story of the Mission Trail and let you know what's, what's in the vicinity as far as businesses and stuff like that. That's what's coming in the future. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Cruz, and I hope that we get to meet each other again soon, but I'm going to send it right back to you, Andy and Monica. Tani, thank you very much, and our thanks to Representative Rudy Cruz. Absolutely amazing to see uh, the growth that we've seen in Socorro. Yeah. Absolutely amazing to see small businesses getting in the act as well. I do. I love that. And like I said earlier, is everyone is here. Everyone mm -hmm. from the businesses that we've seen and tried their food have been here, and they really do act like a family. No everyone doubt. knows everyone. So I'm loving Socorro so and much. they've absolutely embraced us and, uh, during our visit here for our <laughs> Small Town Spotlight Series. Uh, we do want to get to our news of the day. That's right. So we'll go ahead and toss it over to our very own Carla Draxler in the studio. Hey, Carla. Thank you so much, guys. Let's take a look at our top stories of the day. CBP officers working at the Sleda Port of Entry seized more than 100 pounds of meth hidden inside an SUV's fuel tank. According to CBP, a 47-year-old woman and the passenger, a 47-year-old man, arrived from Mexico and were sent for a second inspection where the drugs were found. The two were both arrested. And today, Texas Governor Greg Abbott signed multiple bills in response to the ongoing fentanyl crisis. The bill will allow prosecutors to seek a murder charge in connection with fentanyl-related deaths. Another bill designates October as Fentanyl Poisoning Awareness Month and another requiring Texas colleges and universities to have Narcan on campuses. 
Now let's go ahead and take a look uh, at our textile traffic cameras. We're looking at I-10 and Reynolds and everything looking pretty smooth out there as of right now. Now let's switch gears. I'm going to send things over to Estela Casas for a look at what's ahead on KTSM 9 News Now at 630. Hey there, Estela. Hi there. And new on 9 News Now in about 20 minutes, smugglers allegedly used fake FedEx vans to smuggle migrants in West El Paso. Our Shelby Cap is speaking with Border Patrol and a local band Cigarettes After Sex will be performing to a home crowd. We'll speak with one of the musicians. Join us for these stories and much more on 9 News Now at 630. Back to you, Carl. Thank you so much, Estella. That's your news of the day. I'm going to send things over back to Andy and Monica live in Socorro for our small town spotlight series. What else do you have for us guys? Hey, Carla. Okay, so I feel like we've been teasing you since yesterday yeah, almost no, no. about what's really unique about Casa Ortiz. Obviously, it's rich in history. Mm -hmm. but rich in history. No doubt about that. <laughs> Some say even haunted. I'm not so sure. I, don't know. I definitely was skeptical. That is until I saw this video you're about to see. I got chills just watching it. Yeah, check it out. That night we were leaving me, my son, and a friend of ours. And as we were walking out, um, we got into the car. We're backing up, and uh, I felt like I was hearing the beeping on the reversing of the vehicle. And I saw a shadow. It seemed like I ran over something. There was nothing there. So it was just weird. We started driving forward. It felt like we were dragging something, but there was nothing there. We uh, Then we left, and my son told me, hey, we should look up at the security camera, see if anything comes up. And then that's what we noticed as they were walking out. There was some kind of like a entity or something was kind of following them in the back, and it kind of like just disappeared. It seemed like a little kid or an elderly lady. And uh, I spoke to a neighbor. He used to live here for 35 years. He's 85 now, and he told me that his grandmother actually passed away here. So he was thinking it could be his grandmother. When we had the uh, video analyzed, um, they came to the conclusion that the video was just a regular video. It hadn't been enhanced or, or you know, worked on or anything like that. Okay, what did you think about that, MD? I'm trying to come up with <laughs> ways to debunk this. I I've never been one into like uh -huh. spooky yeah. ghost sort of. Th I, I mean, what else? Wh I, I call like it how I see it. What do you What do you see? I feel like now that enough proof right i don't know something i don't know you guys have to make up your mind it's at definitely home something. Yeah. <laughs> well coming up we are going to be talking about uh, the weather obviously robert is going to be telling us what to expect for the rest of the work week and then sam guzman has an incredible story yes. we've been seeing it since yesterday you don't want to miss it out we'll be right back
for grades kinder through 12. Apply now at ideapublicschools.org slash apply. Your local weather authority, Robert Bettis, the Borderlands only certified broadcast meteorologist. It's small town spotlight and of course these small town spotlights could not happen without the sponsorship of Charlie Clark Automotive. Joining me, the one, the only Bobby Bone. Yes. You hungry, Bobby? I am hungry for good pie. Okay, this is the, the Bodega Loya Peach Pie and I wanted to Delicious. taste it live on air. That's actually my fork, yeah, I'm so but sorry. Uh, you take that one. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Bobby. Yes, let me it's get It's going to be that. hot this weekend, so we need some refreshing peach pie. Mm, mm, mm. That is delicious. Mm. Here comes your forecast. Here comes your exclusive nine hour forecast for our Thursday. Temperatures are going to continue to climb over the next few days. As expected, Father's Day weekend will be a triple digit heat weekend. 101 our high temperature tomorrow. The winds are going to be stronger for our Thursday, gusting to about 35 miles per hour. Here are the high temperatures so far today. 99 in Juarez, 96 El Paso, 90 Alamogordo, 93 Deming, and 94 in Las Cruces. Those winds gusting to between 25 and 30 miles per hour. We're going to feel it the worst right on the eastern slopes of the mountains. But as we've seen the last few nights, give it a while and those winds will slowly die down. Well to the south of the borderland, we have partly cloudy skies, even a couple of light showers, but nothing around here. We can expect here to be clear tonight with those few clouds disappearing through the evening. Here comes your allergy forecast. The pollen count peaks on Friday at 5. 5.7 before dropping a bit for the weekend. Traveling, we've got severe weather hot spots through the deep south, Louisiana and Mississippi, Arkansas, also through Kansas and Oklahoma. But for us, a few clouds for our Thursday and the wind stronger, gusting to about 35 miles per hour. Here come the low temperatures tonight, 58 in Alamogordo, 55 Deming, 70 for Juarez and 67 Van Horn. Your high temperatures tomorrow, Alamogordo at 97. 96 for Deming, 98 Las Cruces, 101 for Juarez, and 100 Van Horn. Tonight, Las Cruces, a few clouds, but clearing. 59 the low temperature. Tomorrow, expect a high of 98 with those southwest winds, 35 miles per hour. 70 the low temperature at the International Airport tonight. Give it a while. The clouds will clear and the winds will slowly die down in the night. They're going to be back stronger again tomorrow with partly cloudy skies and a high of 101 degrees. Now, only KTSM gives you nine full days of weather, and unfortunately, it is a very hot forecast. Friday, 101 and breezy, gusty winds on Saturday, partly cloudy, and 102. Just for Dad, that high pressure continues to build at 104 in the afternoon. 106 on Monday, and then the dome of high pressure kicks into a high gear Tuesday through Friday. We could see a high temperature as high as 108 by Thursday. Ladies and gentlemen, now is the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time for Bobby Bone and the Charlie Clark Automotive Group Choir. Bobby, if you would, take yes. your place. All right, guys. One, two, three. Oh, Perfection! achieved. Oh, no. Thank you so much, Thank Town of Socorro. Yes. We have enjoyed it thoroughly. We'll be right back with more in just a moment.
starting June 23rd in El Paso. Tickets are flying fast. Buy in advance at JurassicQuest.com. And now, KTSM 9 Sports with Sam Guzman. Sponsored by Glasheen Vias and Enderman Injury Lawyers. Welcome back to KTSM 9 News, a small town spotlight live from Socorro. And when you talk about sports and Socorro, you have to talk about the 2009 Socorro High School baseball team. About 14 years ago, a Bulldogs team led by legendary head coach Chris Forbes put together one of the most dominant seasons in Texas high school baseball history that led them to getting the chance to do something that no El Paso high school baseball team had done since the 1949 Bowie Bears win a state championship. I want to take you back 2009 Dell Diamond Stadium in Round Rock, Texas, UIL 5A state championship game. Just what was your final message to the team before first pitch that day? You know, with those kids, I really didn't have to talk to them much, didn't really have to give them any motivational speech. I think they understood the importance of it. Welcome to the Texas 5A state championship. It's the Lufkin Panthers and the El Paso Socorro Bulldogs. In 2009, Socorro was one win away from Texas high school baseball immortality. We had been through a lot as a team. We grew up playing together since we were kids, you know what I mean? We spent holidays together and we were just focused, you know, like if we had one game to play and we just wanted to win the last one. Things did not start off well for the Bulldogs. Lufkin took an early 2-0 lead and held Socorro hitless through three, but it was in the fourth inning when things changed. The fourth inning, for some reason, it was our our inning of where we gelled. I know he's got a no-hitter going through three. This fourth one is ours, and they believed in it. 3-2 is a curveball hit in the air to deep left field. Doesn't have enough. Going back, and it is gone. Tie ball game. Then in the fifth inning, the floodgates opened again. Socorro had bases loaded, and one of its best hitters up at the plate, Corey Falcon. He was such a great hitter that, uh, you know, you knew something was going to happen. Corey was in the batter's uh, waiting on the on-deck circle and he comes and tells me, hey, watch this. I think I told somebody that in the dugout, I was like, watch this. And then I went up and yeah, it all worked out. The 0-1, another curveball, hit in the air to left. Back goes the left fielder, find him, and it's on the berm for a grand slam home run. When he came around third base, he, uh, you know, he slapped my hand pretty hard, you know, so I knew that we had the confidence then. That confidence led Socorro to holding off a late Lufkin rally in the final inning of the game to make history. And Falvey makes the grab! Socorro wins its first ever state championship! 60 years in the making! I just remember just jumping up and down, and then, you know, next thing you know, like, I'm at the bottom of the dog pile, right? So uh, that was that was pretty cool. I remember looking around and thinking, you know, I'm a kid from Socorro, and I'm here to witness this, and we lived it for our community, and this is a great community to be in. Just all the, the time and effort put in from when we were little to finishing the game, you know, all the experience, all the days off, all the fights, it all made sense. It happened more than a decade ago. Why do you think it's still something people in not only in Socorro, but the city of El Paso still care about? Coming from El Paso and being able to achieve something that uh, is your ultimate goal, every coach, that's their that's their dream, to win a state championship. And uh, to be able to do it from El Paso is uh, a big sense of pride for everybody. The final score, Socorro 12, Lufkin 7. You can find a mural of that entire 2009 Socorro High School baseball team at Southwest University Park, first base concourse. So if you're going out tonight for the locomotive game, good chance to check it out. Ooh, and now you got a little perfect. backstory to it. So it should be a fun night of soccer. So we'll have highlights tonight at 10, of course. Just an incredible story, Sam. You did an absolutely great job. And it's such a part of this community, that 2019. The first thing you see when you drive into Socorro <laughs> is home of the 2009 state That's baseball right. champion yeah, yeah. Bulldogs. So Aww. very, very cool to see that element of it. Love yeah, it. hasn't been done since 1949 before that, so it's been it's crazy to see. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's baseball incredible. immortality. There we go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, this has done it for our small town spotlight series. Big shout out to the city of Socorro mm -hmm. for hosting us. Charlatan, Bodega Loya, all the wonderful people behind yes. us that make this <laughs> possible. <laughs> make sure you're tuning in next. Wednesday for our next stop. Really excited about that. So we'll see you then. Bye.